what's up people hey 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 we're back yes melon and me podcast we're back um we want to do a review on insecure yeah, it was a great five. episode last night great great episode um i'm excited to talk about it let's get into it me too let's get into it so i have my little notes here um so this was the big block party episode that i was so tired of hearing about this block party so i'm glad it happened <laughs> so i feel like we, we can move on it since last season <laughs> We can now move forward on to something else. <laughs> exactly. So the opening scene, for real, it had me kind of shook. So it was the night before, I guess. Mm-hmm. And she was stressing because she lost her headliner. And so she yes. calls up Nathan. Or no, she just wanders online. She sees Nathan's online. She reaches out to him. And he's like, you know, you need anything? Hit me up. So she hits him up. And they start talking. He asks her about Molly and this is what had me shook when she was like, for real, I don't fuck with Molly no more. And I was like, damn. How many times have I said that when it comes to a friend? A lot of times. I don't know if that's a good thing, but like, I don't fuck with her anymore. But yeah, I felt that. I felt that. And they when cut it, it right there. This was just a beautifully directed episode. They cut it. So automatically the suspense is up because we're like, damn, we want to see Issa and Molly like come together. So that was kind of interesting to me. Um, yeah. And just to see Nathan, because I don't think this we've seen him at all this season, right? We haven't. Yeah. So that He's such cute. a cutie. He is really cute. Yeah, so from there, what happens? We go to Molly's house, and we see her getting ready with Andrew. And mm-hmm. she's, like, trying to figure out what to wear, but she slick, has, like, an attitude, and kind of doesn't want to go. So that was kind of weird. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, she was slick, had an attitude, and Andrew was like, look, we don't have to go. And Molly's like, no, I'm her best friend. Um, it's just really to creepy there. to say that. It was really weird. She, she said that a few times throughout the episode where I'm like, okay, I don't know if you really are just trying to put up the best friend front, like just play this role, or if you really even know like what a best friend like means because I don't know. I'd be really pissed if my best friend didn't try to help me with the one project I had going on, like, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's with Molly. And then, so I think the next scene is the actual block party, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we get to the block party. Um, what you got on the list over there? Where am I at? Consola. Is it Consola? What was her name? Oh, Condola. I've been calling her Condola. Condola. I was like, why does that not sound right? Condola shows up for business. Now that was interesting to see because I remember, your point of view, I had told Marlon about that yesterday. I was like, ooh, I was like, Whitney thought that Condola, well, this was just her, you know, opinion on how mm-hmm. it probably all went down. So then I internalized your opinion because I was thinking like, oh, that's so plausible. Like that actually could be. It so I was like, yeah. oh, Condola's there. What the fuck is that bitch doing there? You know, uh, it's whatever. Um, and you know, she, she showed up to do her due diligence and to tie up loose ends. You know, it was really uncomfortable again to watch that type of interaction because I feel like, you know, as much as two people that are either friendships or if you have a relationship with someone and an ex comes into play or any type of like, male whatever it literally can change the way depending on how you know you and that relationship play out it can really alter things I don't care how separate you try to keep it and to really be like no this is business this is friendship this is business this is friendship no if shit doesn't pan out the way you want it to that shit really gets muddied muddied and confusing you know and it's unfortunate because Issa really liked her you know and she really wasn't stutting. I mean, she she felt some type of way about the relationship. Sure, I feel like anybody would if you're dating my ex and now you and I are like having to work together. You know what I mean? Right. I think that's natural. But at the same time, I really, really do believe that Issa tried to keep that separate and she did. respect, you know, what they had. And, mm-hmm. you know, because she had her own shit going on that was bigger than Lawrence at the time, which was this block party. So, 
anyways it's so kind of like it makes me feel like um i don't know i was just kind of like Corolla, I mean not Corolla. What's the girl name? Condola. <laughs> Condola. <laughs> I don't call her Corona. Okay, Corona. Toyota. <laughs> Condola. She could have just stayed home. You know what I mean? Like, why show up if you know you've been dodging the person's calls who put together this whole event? Like, for all you know, the whole event could have fell through, and you just showing up with your little business suit on, acting like you're so professional. And you're not professional because you're taking some personal business. Issa didn't even ask you nothing about Lawrence. Like Issa didn't even know. She didn't even know. And this is why I think that Lawrence low key probably went to Condola and told her that he did have feelings for Issa because it's like, why would you even pull her into that? It makes it seem like she's automatically equating Lawrence breaking up with her to Issa. You know what I mean? Like that was just weird. And, and then when, when Condola up and asked her, she was like, Lawrence didn't tell you? And she was like, tell me what? And it almost felt like, even though Issa was, or even though she was like, yeah, no, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I feel like Condola still didn't really believe her, you know? Mm-hmm. So. She didn't. So that I think sucked. it was kind of weird. Was it kind of weird to you that Lawrence wasn't there, though? Yeah. I kind of um, thought he would be there just because of their last, like, interaction and stuff. Who, and, there, I actually thought he was there when she, um... At the end? At the end when she got, Issa was like, hey! Or, it was like a surprise. Mm-hmm. I forgot who she, who it ended up being. Was it her brother? I don't, I forgot who it was. But it wasn't Lawrence. And no, it I wasn't. Just, and I, I thought it, was, it was Lawrence. I thought it was Lawrence. But yeah, to your point, I was shocked that he didn't show up either. Yeah, it was kind of strange. Um, but I think they're trying to build that up so we kind of like mm-hmm. get the whole breakdown on what happened between him and Condola. So, but I don't even want Issa and Lawrence to be together. I don't either. She could do better. It doesn't work for me. I'd rather have I you with honestly Daniel. truly feel like, and I've said this over the last few seasons, I've, I've, I'm, a, I'm a big advocate for you know, when you break up to make up, break up to make up, or you end up being with somebody and all you have are like, years and years all you have are all these years right i'm a firm believer that if you get back together with someone you're going to be reminded as to why you broke up with them in the first place right so not all the time sometimes that works meaning like you know you have this large separation and you get back together and now you're married kids happily ever after and then you have a lot of times where you're like see i knew i shouldn't have came back because this was the bullshit Da, 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 da. And I personally believe the reason why they needed to break up was simply because they had outgrown each other in their own ways. Lawrence, Issa was holding Lawrence back, meaning not literally, I'm talking about in a figuratively way. Like I feel like, um, and I've said this before with friendships. So put it like this way. If you're, if, if, if person A, let's just say Lawrence is with a girl named Tiffany and then Tiffany and Lawrence break up, and Tiffany tells you, Whitney, when you meet Lawrence, girl, he was not no good, he ain't shit, he ain't this, he ain't this, he ain't this, that was y'all's relationship, he may be the best man to you, he may be a whole new person when it comes to you, now, again, we know some men that, yeah, it doesn't matter who they're with, they're just, they're not shit, but I also believe who you are to someone may not be who you are to the next person, and I feel like we've seen Lawrence flourish, in his own right, once him and Issa left each other alone, again, not because of Issa's fault. It's just sometimes you just don't work. And then Issa, you know, we're seeing her kind of on her struggle, but she's, I feel like, grown still in a lot of ways as well. So, I mean, I'm interested in seeing them give it, I mean, if they give it another shot, I wouldn't be mad at it because I think that, a part of Issa kind of needs that to feel like she ain't missed out on shit because she feels like she True. got, she feels like she got him to where he was. And the True. only reason he broke up was because he was in hard times and his finances were messed up. And had that never have happened, she would have never cheated. That's what she thinks in her head. But it's like, when you're really with someone, it's like, maybe you treat it because of other things. Like it really wasn't about what he had going on. It was more about like how you felt. And it's kind of weird because they do have, like, this chemistry between them. Obviously, they're always, like, cracking inside jokes and stuff. Um, yeah. 
but, but it, it's like more of a like friend everybody i feel like that's just isa's personality you know what i mean yeah plus he's a friend of all their friends so he like yeah. he's just in the group you know right i don't know if there's like the spark of of energy like where I'm like oh my god they have this intense dying like almost like yeah. a Melanie Derwin type thing like I think it's literally just they're great and friends Derwin, we had to have them together like they were yeah, you like, had to yeah. you had to have them together it's they fit and so yeah so all of that to say you know I, I agree with you to 100% she probably is in a space where she's like you know um, I prepared him, you know, just to go on and be with somebody else. And now they get the husband material and I had to get the struggle, the struggle love. I think that's but, um, like what she thinks. So who knows yeah. if she even goes knows? for a part, of me thinks that, a part of me thinks that Lawrence may try to get back with her and he, she just turns him down. But yeah, that could we'll happen see. too. Cause I definitely think he wants to try it again and you know, he's all in. I definitely believe that. I think he just um, wants to settle down and marry somebody. Yeah. Like anybody. That, that may be true. <laughs> yeah. That may, I get that vibe. Um, so, so we get to the block party and um, the first thing we see is like, you know, the vendors are set up and I love how Issa can always slip in all of these like current real life struggles um because she made a comment about how even though the block party was in Inglewood it's nothing but like white people there and um <laughs> it's funny because that whole area is gentrified so a bunch of white people do live in Inglewood now so it's funny how she can like kind of make that a part of her show so we get there girl and I like, thought it was hilarious when she was like her assistant came and was like oh you got press honey you gotta come over here you got press <laughs> the YouTube lady and she was like, oh my God. She was like, I'm sorry, I'll be back. And then they were <laughs> recording her, asking her questions. She was like, yeah, you know, I'm doing it for the culture. And the lady turned around and was like, okay. Like, cause there was all these white people. And then she it was, was so like, funny. It was so funny. And she was just like, okay, where can I, you know, where can the people see this at? And she's like, my YouTube channel. And she said, oh, okay. And she's like the one I started today. And she was, and she was like, like, what's your name? She was like, I haven't started yet. Yeah, I haven't started it yet. She was like, oh, wow. So you hired all of these camera people. She was like, yeah, you know. I did. Make it look official. She was like, oh, she was like, well, I believed it. <laughs> That's really how it be in LA. That's really how it be in LA. And then it's like, so LA. Because Issa started on YouTube. So it's kind of like she's yeah. herself. Like, it's funny. Yep. It's very funny. She did start um, on YouTube. Speaking of funny, so we get to the block party and we see um, that Kelly is there. Kelly is already like the comedic relief besides Issa Love of the show. Kelly, Kelly is like my her, favorite. I wish they would make her character like a bit more rounded. Like I wish we knew a bit more about her life, but as of right now, she's just the funny character, and that's that's cute. Love her. So she had um, her boo on there, and she was pretending to be like. What was she pretending to be from London? British. British. <laughs> Girl, I can't. I was cracking up, literally. Cracking up. And shout out to like um that rapper who was her boyfriend. I think his name is Eamon or Eamon or Amon. He's a rapper. We saw a lot of cameos from like rappers and um oh, man, you used to know Amon. Wasn't it that his name in college? Amon, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh wow. That's cool. So yeah, shout out to them. I like how they played that and the dynamic with um, Issa's brother. I love Issa's brother. He's so He's funny. So funny. He is so funny. Yep. So it was good to see her friends show up. We see Tiffany get there and she is really excited to be out because she just had the baby. And she also had like a few moments where, you know, she was drinking and she made a few little sarcastic, dark jokes about not being able to breastfeed and it being the baby's loss and all this shit. So a part of me thinks she's maybe dealing with like post, what do you call it? Post postpartum depression or something like. She just yeah. And I it. think it, that's a really good point of view that they've had as well Is like, you know, when you have a baby and your first baby, your whole life just is just immediately totally different from, you know, anything that you've ever known. You can't prepare 
you know, everyone's like, I want to have a baby at the right time. Sure. You know, have a baby plan to have a baby, you know, when your finances are in their best order. But as far as finances, that's just one aspect. It's a big aspect. Yeah, it's prepare, needed. Yeah. You need money to take care of baby. So I don't want to like make it sound like, you know, money's not everything. Um, when it comes to having <laughs> kids, Jeez. you need money. They're expensive little fuckers. Um, Girl. but at the same time, they take a lot out of you. Like, I mean, you're used to think about it all these years you're in. These people are like, what they're in their thirties. I think the show like kind of focuses on early mm -hmm. to mid thirties. Mm -hmm. So you've gone all these years doing things your way, having your sleep, somewhat being selfish because you can, you know, yeah. and then now you throw a baby in the mix and it really doesn't matter if you have a partner or not. It's still really hard. And a lot of times when you have a baby, the responsibilities still fall on the mother because of that nurturing aspect, the mother breastfeeds or the mother's the one that gets up in the middle of the night. Sure. If you have a partner and you split the responsibilities, it's great. But there are times where for sure the, the mother is always just needed you know what I'm saying? And it, it can take a lot out of a person. And right. then you're like, okay, you kind of allow yourself to fall to the wayside because you're so focused on making sure your baby is good. You're making sure, you know, everybody else around you is good that, you know, you slowly start to see bits and pieces of your life falling away, but then life is still continues with your friends and yeah. they're going on to do things that you are like, you know what I mean? So that was a real aspect, especially when she was like, I'm going to stay. Yeah. She's like, I'm having like, fun. I'm having fun. You go take care of that. He's like, the baby's crying. We need to go. And she's like, I'm going to stay. So that was also very funny. I've and that was amazing how her husband that. just was like, okay, I got it. Like, yeah. that's cool. For sure. Super cool. I thought teamwork, cool. partners. Uh, it's so f important for people to choose their partner carefully before having a baby like yeah. that is the most important thing before you get married before you have a baby choose who you would want to have a baby with because mm -hmm. of character like that's the most important thing other than just having a baby with somebody because yeah. you want to raise a well-rounded baby again I'm not saying that if you're a single parent you can't you can't do it all and be amazing and whatever but if you have a helpmate that, yeah, that just makes it all the, the, the better. Right. Exactly. That's how, because at the end of the day, that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, it takes two to make it. So it's just, it's just how it's supposed to be. There people are supposed to have a mom and dad or whatever, mom, mom and a dad and a yeah. dad, whatever you're supposed to, that's how the world is supposed to be. Yeah. Especially having your village too. I think having a village is really important. I want to, if I might add. Mm -hmm. aunties are important uncles are important friends all that kind of stuff your support system yeah so so it's cool to see how um she's handling the whole baby and the whole group of single friends because it's for like sure. a whole different thing and shout yeah. out amanda seals because i just feel like she plays that role very very well like she does complete opposite of her it's crazy she she's she yeah she totally she totally does she totally does she gets it i feel like she's kind of gone down this season like with her acting to me versus the other seasons like I don't know but it could be just me being weird with this season and I don't know because like, I feel like up. this is the most I've really seen of her like her backstory like I don't know I feel like her and Kelly are usually like very flat characters you don't really see surface like, yeah that's surface true but now and I'm that feeling like I that may sense. be why I feel that way too, because it's like they're giving her more, so I'm seeing more of her. So it's like, you yeah, know. I think she's playing the the mom role pretty, pretty good. But yeah. I don't know, that's me. Um, so yeah, we see everybody at the party. You know, finally Molly gets there with Andrew, and it's awkward, of course. Um, Molly and Issa just aren't vibing with each other, but they're trying to like play nice or whatever. And this is the part that really stood out to me. So Andrew and Molly are sitting on the couch just vibing. And, and Andrew looks around and he's like, damn, this is really nice. Like Issa really did this. Like she really pulled this off. You know, this takes a lot to do. So that, that may be why you guys have been disconnected as friends because, you know, Issa's been focusing on this and this is huge. And Molly's like, yeah, you're right. It is nice. It is nice. Almost like she just didn't expect it to be nice. She didn't expect it to really happen. And she's just like, she's having the hardest time just like giving Issa her props. And it's crazy how an outsider 
who hasn't known Issa his whole life can just step into it and like be like, damn, your girl did that, you know? Right. But Molly right. still can't even give that to Issa. So I found that kind of funny. Um and um yeah, she tries to put she tries to make nice with Issa. She tries to buy her some food. Um, they try to have a little bit of an awkward conversation, and then they finally get to the point where um, you know, right before Vince Staples comes on, everyone's in the crowd and they're doing the they was doing what the cha-cha slide or something. What was they doing? The wobble. The wobble. They was on the wobble. And shout out to that scene because I really felt like I was vibing. I was like, damn, I remember them days when we could dance with people and shit. Um but yeah, shout out to that whole scene because I, I was feeling that. But so Issa and Molly kind of laugh and dance and we see them kind of make amends. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, they, they, they coming together. So the end of the night, we see Vince Staples, the headliner, who Issa was like b- very nervous that he wasn't going to show up. He shows up. He does a great job. Everyone's hype. It's an amazing show. And then all hell breaks, breaks loose. <laughs> Yeah. Mia, go ahead. You can you can take us into that. Well, so you know, in in short, you know, Andrew was like, yo, like this is again, this is dope. I'm so glad that everything worked out and you know, blah blah blah. And I forgot what exactly he said that led Molly to know that So here's what happened. So um Vince Staples was the artist that, you know. Issa had gotten last minute and we we know that Andrew works at the record company so when Molly and Andrew were leaving the event we see Vince Staples manager say what's up to Andrew and he says hey man thank you for the connect and Andrew's like of course dude I got you and he was Mm -hmm. like Vince wants to holla at you and he was like all right I'll be there in a second so Molly's like what is he thanking you for what connect and he was like the connect with the show that's I hooked right. Issa up with um, Vince Staples. I just sent an email. He was like, I just sent an email. No big deal. Right. And Molly was like, what? Did Issa ask you for that? And he was like, nah, Nathan. Nathan asked me. And so she starts fuming red. She's looking for Issa, furious. And yeah, yeah that's, when, that's when she approaches her and basically gets really upset that she went in uh, she went in like from the jump because I had to rewatch it and Molly really was the aggressor like she started calling Issa out her name she started she called her bitch first like she hopped in her face first like she was going to do something physically it's really sad when you see two friends get to that that level yeah it is I I have two feelings about it I definitely am on Um, I can see Molly's side of everything where, um, where she was like deliberately saying like, don't ask my man for favors, whether we, we feel like that was the correct way or approach to do it. That's one thing. My thing is that's not what she said though. If that's what she meant, that's what she should have said, but that's not what she said. She said, I don't want to interfere myself like no no I have to disagree because if I were to say something like that but if I were to have said but the whole point is is that I don't want I don't want my thing is the reason why I don't want to go to my man is because I don't want to get in the middle of this this is what how I took it I don't want to get in the middle of any type of situation where it comes down to my man helping you get anything that's how I took it. Yeah, so, but she didn't say that. She should have said that. She said, I don't want to be the one. Me and Andrew are just getting on good terms. I don't want to ask him for nothing like that. I want to separate romance and business. My thing is, it would be completely valid had Issa not known Andrew through Nathan. Like at the end of the day, Molly, you only know Andrew because of Nathan, who was dating Issa. So it's not like this man sits on an island and you're the only one that knows this man. You literally only know this man because this is homeboys of Issa's old boo. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you don't really have that authority. At the end of the day, I just feel like your man is a mutual friend of Issa's friend who you met through them. So it's like, what's the I just big think deal? That, I just think that, you know, how I took, how I've been taking, how I, the energy that I've been feeling from their relationship is 
the favors are done. The favors are have run out. That she wasn't her favor to give, though. She doesn't want to help. She doesn't want to help Lisa. She that doesn't wasn't want her to favor to give. Would would you say? Oh, I was just saying that wasn't Molly's favor to give. Like the favors could be done, and I don't. I honestly, I tried to think back. I was like, what are all these favors that Molly did for Issa? I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know. But my thing is that wasn't no favor of Molly to give. Like that was Andrew's favor. Well, like Molly definitely has we can't act like Molly's never been there and come through for Issa because there's been several times where Issa that's kind of their relationship where Issa leans on Molly for a lot and it's never been an issue for Molly to make something happen or to hook somebody up with something or for her to like give her money or to help something. I'm trying to remember because from what I recall, I remember Molly was like, even when Issa had nowhere to live, Molly's like, come live with me. And Issa's like, no girl, I'm not about to like put you out. I'm not doing that. I'm going to find my way, whatever. Like, I don't really remember all these things Molly did for Issa financially. So when she started calling her out and she was like, all you do is looking for favors and trying to use people and this, that, and the third. I'm like, who was she really using? Because at the beginning, on the beginning, her man was sleeping on her couch, so her man was basically using her, and she didn't stay with you when she got kicked out. Like, I don't know. I'm really trying to think of all the favors, but I don't know. There must be something in there. I just I don't know. I just, I just have always over felt, I, 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 I can't <laughs> think back to all those seasons because it's been separated for so long, but I just always looked at their relationship as Issa was kind of like the one friend who's always trying to make shit happen but needs help with it. And Molly's kind of the friend that has her life together in one aspect, just one aspect, which is her career. And so Issa leans on that a lot um, in the sense of, you know, when you, when you just have a friend that's a little bit more solid in one area that you kind of are all over the place, you kind of look to her to be like, okay, you know, help me out, give me some ideas or whatever, the, whatever. But it's like, it was be. a mutual relationship that's my thing absolutely like, that's what because I'm in the beginning like, of insecure when Issa was in the productive successful relationship and molly was the single hot person out here fucking everybody she was coming to Issa, asking Issa for advice before Issa started cheating and it's shit. not a like, one-sided relationship I, what i'm saying is is that they both have been they i've i can relate to their relationship because I relate to the show. I relate to all of it. I relate to all the relationships. I've never thought that Issa was this one that was like, oh, oh, poor Issa, poor Issa. It's life. I have friends that, you know, have taken years for themselves to get to their career spots and have needed people, you know, to kind of help and lean on things and stuff like that. I've known friends that have their shit together in one area and are a fucking mess in a relationship area or other areas that you know but the relationship works so what I'm saying is Molly and Issa have been they're super to me opposite but they are the same in so many ways which makes their relationship so great and have been so great the only time it's ever been an issue for us to see is this season where Molly's just trying to shut down for whatever reason her access for Issa to come to her when it's never been an issue before everything's an issue this season so for I'm me i tell you because it seems like she's one of those unsupported. But it's never been an issue it's never been an issue in any other season it's because other than the season that i'm seeing right now because whatever reason trying to get her shit together this season Issa yeah had a goal Issa was not wrapped up in molly's shit Issa was getting her shit together and Issa wasn't always there for Molly, because if you want to talk about using people, Molly used Issa all the time for uh, to emotionally dump on her, to emotionally tell her how she feel about everything and complain to her about everything like Issa ain't got shit to do. That's why she got really pissed when she had called Issa and Issa was talking about business as opposed to just listening to Molly vent about everything. Yeah. And Molly took that personally. And my thing is, it seems to me, looking at it from outside looking in, it's like Molly had a problem with her friend leveling up. You know what I'm saying? Like she's so used to Issa being Issa who can't get her shit together that even when she is trying everything to get her shit together, you don't even believe in her. Not only do you not believe in her, you have an opportunity to help her when shit fell through and you decide not to do it. But you want to come through and say, of course I'll be there. I'm your best friend. 
it's like, it's really easy to say you're someone's best friend, but then you don't want to be supportive. You don't believe in their dreams. You don't try to help them when you know they don't have no other options. Like, you can't call me your best friend if you act like that towards me. I'm sorry. And then at my event, my one event, you come at me and call me a bitch and all types of shit when you could have just waited 20 minutes for the shit to be over. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Molly really lost her shit. And she really is miserable. She looks miserable. Yeah. <laughs> so she should have just been happy. I feel I mean, like she's it. been... I, I mean, I don't feel like that's something new. I feel like Molly, to me, I've always got that there's been this sense of mis- misery. I feel like Issa has always maintained... Issa has been the same Issa since day one. And I feel like we've seen Molly struggle. Yeah. Like, we've seen it. It's just that she, yeah. this it's more pronounced this season. But I feel like Molly has definitely... We've known her to struggle as far as the relationship side. And that's been really something that she's been trying to conquer and, and do right. Um, I was on Yvonne Orgy, who plays um, Molly in the show, her page today, and I just was, like, looking through her stories, and she posted this really, really good, like, article, or somebody had wrote this on behalf of, like, their review, and I think it's just really good, Mm -hmm. um, because I know that I've gone through this personally with some friendships, and, you know, I get it. Um, It says, I think they're both feeling that like when molly asks Issa if she's sure about being okay with condola the reality is is that molly's right because we saw Issa confessing to amal how she really feels about seeing lawrence and condola together which is exactly what molly has been saying the people closest to you know you the best and know you the worst as well i follow the holistic psychologists and all these different psychologists and they talk about how we can't rush other people's processes for them. Sure, we can see the trauma and what needs to be addressed, but trying to force feed that onto somebody is actually doing them a disservice because everybody needs their own pathway. I think that's something these friends don't realize. Just because you can see my issue before me doesn't mean that I should see it right away and that I know what to do with it. Even if I do see it right away, that's life. So there's been times where... I think outside of what you're saying, as far as, you know, Molly not wanting her to do well or, you know, help, she sees a friend that's down and she can, you know, offer her an opportunity to really help her and be supportive. I think on the other side of that has been um, us seeing Molly trying to, you know, point fingers and to remind Issa, like, okay, you're, you know, you're, you don't know what you're doing as far as, you know, condola. You don't know who she is. You don't know, do you know anything about her? Like you're, you know, are you sure you're really good with her and him and Lawrence? And it's like, just because you may know something or you may feel something and you think, because that's what she did with Nathan too. She spoke on Issa's behalf for Nathan. Like, don't come back here. Don't come around. And Issa's like, what the fuck? Like, let me be the one to like, you know, like sometimes we wait on that. Sometimes we as women- (laughs) Molly was pissing me off for a seat for a long time coming now. (laughs) Sometimes we as women, we wait for that moment for that guy to come back around so we can tell him off, you know? So she kind of took that moment away from Issa. Again, based on this um, paragraph, it's like, you know, that's not Mm -hmm. your, that's not your plight to do for me on my behalf. Like, especially when your shit's fucked up. Like we're all, we all have our own, but she's projecting and I feel like we all, you know, have seen that if we have experienced it or we know what that looks like, you know, she's hurt, hurt people, hurt people. And I think that e- Molly's not giving Issa the opportunity um, to really find her way. She just expects her to just do something the way Molly feels like she would do it. And at the end of the day, it, you know, you can't do that. You, you just can't do that. And you're no better than anybody else just because you feel like you know you can tell somebody what you would do and you may not even know what you would do if you were in that situation but I think that that's also an aspect of what we're seeing as well is like oh Issa's not doing what I say or she's not living her life she's not living her life in the way that I feel like she should live it so therefore you're fucking up you know, the same thing with like, her mama. Like your parents have been together for 40, 50 years and you're going to insert yourself into some grown ass people yeah. business for some shit that happened 30 years ago. Like mind your business. That's your problem. You worry about everybody mm-hmm. else's problems except your own problems. And you right. send up here causing problems because at the end of the day, your man, Andrew, 
it was nothing for him to help Issa. He didn't even care. He didn't even think about it. He was like, it was an email. I don't, I didn't even think to mention it. Like, I just thought that's your best friend. I'm gonna do it. Like, the fuck? right. So now you're showing your ass looking petty when your man was having a good time, electric sliding and all that shit. And you started all this drama. Like, right. Molly to me is a mess. I'm sorry. She got some real issues and I just couldn't imagine. I can't see her and Andrew working out because it's just like a matter of time before she explode on him over some dumb shit. Right. But yeah, it's interesting. I, I'm very interested because we're only halfway through the season. So a bunch of stuff could still happen. Mm-hmm. And um, it looks like Issa in the next episode meets like some new friends. And I saw Kyla Pratt is going to be on there. Oh, I'm is she? To see her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love her. I miss her I on like one on one. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really good. That was the best episode the whole season so far for me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm really good. We'll, we'll see. To be continued. I know they got picked up for what, season five? Because I was like, I wonder when the last season is going to be last season. Because like, she's very adamant about saying that she does not want to drag this out to where it's yeah. like, you know, when seasons get stale, like power. Where it's going to be five or six seasons. So yeah. probably the next one's the last one, probably. Yeah. So by them picking it up for season five, I was like, oh, okay, well, we're locked in for at least another season. Yeah. So. We just don't know how many years it's going to take to get there, y'all. <laughs> it took two years last time to get yeah. to this season and that was without corona so everything's yeah. halted right now because snowfall was supposed to drop um june or july and now they're oh, like really that's, that's gonna get pushed back for sure because they didn't finish shooting he's um i follow one of the actors so so will probably be in fall hopefully <laughs> girl only the hopefully. lord knows <laughs> hopefully <laughs> so uh, Y'all, thanks for tuning in. Let us know your comments on this episode. Follow our YouTube, of course, for those who listen on the podcast. If you're on YouTube, follow our podcast. Duh. Yes. Yeah. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.